Well, welcome back to another Coffee and a Chat. I was just sitting here having some time with the Lord. And uh, he brought some things to mind. And I feel this, this urgency to go ahead and, and just turn the camera on and record what's going on in my mind here. What he's putting on my heart. So, I have to give you just a little backstory. Going back a lot of years ago. Uh, a friend that I had grown up in church with, we well, like junior high, high school, uh, her family had moved to town um, when they were a little older. And anyway, she and I had reconnected via the, the internet. And so we'd been talking, and we both had children that we were um, really trusting to the Lord and wanting God to move in their lives. Well, she had... My friend had been on a, uh, I believe it was a ministry trip, and she'd met another woman who also had children that she wanted to really trust to the Lord that God would have his way in their hearts. And so the three of us kind of created on, an online um, group of mothers, just the three of us, um, you know, a little circle of moms that we would we were praying for our own children, but we would also pray for each other's children. And, and so I can't remember, I think it was like each week we would kind of, you know, um, rotate the kids around so that, that we were all covering all of our children. Now, I never met this other woman in person. I only knew her online and uh, through our little prayer times together and the things that we shared. Well, I got a call from my friend one day saying something terrible's happened. And so just a, a little nugget of what this was, was this other woman, her son that she was really, really concerned about. Um, I believe he was, that he had been doing drugs. And I don't know what all happened that day, what the whole story was, but he had gone to his parents' house and he had ended up murdering them. And so then he was, of course, uh, put in prison. Now, I was in shock when when my friend called me and told me this had just happened, that she had just found out. She'd woke up that morning and it was on the news. And I just, it, it's one of those things that just seems surreal and it's hard to wrap your head around it. Um, but there was this conviction placed on my heart to continue to pray for this son. Now this was, I believe, around 20 years ago. And this thought came to me, his mom's not here to pray for him anymore. And you know nobody prays for their children like a mother prays for her children. So if you don't have a praying mama, oh, I feel bad for you because even under the best of circumstances, we all need a praying mama. And this young man wasn't going to have a praying mama. She had gone on to heaven. And that doesn't mean that, you know, I don't know, do we still pray for our loved ones when we're in heaven? Are we even aware? Um, I, I don't know. Th these are questions that people ask all the time, and, and we don't really um, know the answer now. But I knew he didn't have somebody here that would pray for him. So I took him on like he was one of my own children. I have never met him. But I continue to pray for him all the time. And today in my prayer journal, because um, each day a different person is highlighted and, and I spend a little extra time in prayer for them. Well, he's the one that's highlighted today. And my heart began to just be heavy for him. You know, and I told the Lord, I don't, I don't know him. If I ran into him on the street, I wouldn't know if it was him or not. I've never met him. To my knowledge, he doesn't even know I exist. But yet I've been praying for him. Now, my friend told me that she had heard that he had gotten saved in prison. Um, I tried to look into some things, and I, and I think that he actually um, may be out. I don't know. I, I'm not sure. But uh, I don't know for sure that he got saved. I hope he did. I hope he found Jesus. Because this is what I was thinking this morning. You know, we, have, we all have those sins of our past. And that cause us great pain because we, we can carry that sense of guilt even when we need to let it go. But how do you live with 
having done something like what he did now yes he you know under the influence of drugs out of his head whatever but he still did it he took the drugs um you know i i would be beating myself up i would have a hard time with that and it's like lord what i want for him is for him to know you i want him to trust you to find his hope in you and i don't want him to be haunted by his past every day of his life but lord to take his past and if he truly knows you now what you've done in him and to use that testimony to touch other people's lives because he's not the only person that's ever been in this situation so um the Lord brought this scripture to my mind because I have things in my past that I beat myself up about all the time. Even though I've repented, I've confessed, I know the Lord's forgiven me. You know, I feel like it's the enemy that's going, oh, do you remember though? What, you know, I mean, how can you even bear to look at yourself in the mirror? Well, um, the Lord brought to my mind 1 John 1, 9. And it's one that, that we, um, let me start in 8 and go through 10. You know, we, we quote First John 1, 9 a lot, but do we really grasp hold of it? It says, if we claim to be without sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. Why? Because all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God, right? There's, there is no human being walking this earth that is, is guilt-free. And then... First John 1 9, the next verse, if we confess our sins, he, God, is faithful and just and will forgive us our sins and purify us from all unrighteousness. And then again, if we claim we have not sinned, we make God out, him, God, out to be a liar and his word is not in us because again rome what is it romans 8 28 for all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of god maybe it's 4 23. see this is what happens when you get old all those addresses start, start jumbling around somebody put in the comments which one it is that um for all have sinned because the other one is for the wages of sin is death but the gift of god is eternal life through jesus christ our lord Okay, so as I was, um, you know, just spending this time with God and going through this, I know that you may be watching this video right now because the Lord wants to remind you that no matter what you've done, no matter how awful it is from your past, no matter any of that, that His forgiveness extends to you as well as anybody else. And, you know, um, we have to repent of our sins because until we repent, which means stop doing it, turn around and go the other way. It's a 180 degree turn, okay? To move in the opposite direction from the direction you were going in that sin. But if we're continuing in that sin, then that sin's still alive in us. And so we have to repent first. Then we confess it to God. We don't try and i think this is why you know um it's telling us you know reminding us that if we claim to be without sin we're a liar you know the truth is not in us because god says that all have sinned and all have fallen short of his glory okay so um we have to acknowledge that that sin is real in us and and i i know i've been a person that's tried to justify herself in the past it doesn't work a sin is a sin and there's no excuse and we are guilty so i am guilty of the things that i have done those are mine but i repented i confessed before god i asked his forgiveness and you know what whether i feel forgiven or not isn't the issue i am forgiven because he says i am and he is not a liar he tells the truth so we are forgiven and we don't have to hold ourselves hostage to that. And I was like, you know, what if I, what if I could talk to this young man today? And he were telling me, but Angie, what I did, how do I ever live with that? 
And my first thought is, you know, Paul, when he was still Saul, he was going around killing all the Christians because he thought they were his, you know, the enemy of God. He didn't understand the truth. And he put a lot of saints to death. Then he has his conversion, just like this young man, I hope, has had his conversion. And then he went on to do as much good for God, for Jesus Christ, and proclaim him as the Messiah as he possibly could. All the days of his life, he sacrificed everything for Jesus. He counted all loss. Okay, so that's what I would say is the past is the past, and it's a testimony of where God has brought you from. Now, what did Jesus say to people when we read in the New Testament and he caught them in sin or, or you know, or people were, you know, like the woman they were going to stone for adultery? He forgave them, and then he said, now go and sin no more. Don't, don't continue in this. Don't keep doing it. So we repent of that which we were doing. We're no longer doing it. And it no longer holds power over us. We can carry a false sense of, of guilt and shame that God has lifted from us because the enemy will keep whispering that in our ear because it distracts us from the Lord. But know today, no matter what you've done, and if you are this young man, and some reason, oh my word, wouldn't that be awesome? that God has forgiven you and that he will take the wounds and the damage and the destruction of your past, the same as he has with mine and so many others, and he will use it to his glory in order to set other people free. Because no matter what you're suffering with from your past, no matter what I'm suffering with from my past, we're not unique, we're not standalone. There are other people going through the same thing. And I think that's, you know, what I'm feeling this morning as I'm reading this is, is just this urgency to tell you that, that God loves you and he's forgiven you. If you are, don't be continuing in it. That is an important key we leave out. It's not just about confessing it. I mean, that's like slapping somebody in the face saying, I'm sorry, slapping them again. I'm sorry. Yep. I slapped you. Slap. Forgive me, slap. How, you know, you got to stop the slapping so the person can forgive you and we can move forward. You know, I mean, and if somebody is continually slapping me, whether they're asking my forgiveness or not, it is my, my duty as a Christian. It's not an option to forgive them because God's forgiven me. But for them to be set free and receive forgiveness, they've got to stop slapping. Get what I'm saying? All right. <sighs> May we all be healed in Jesus' name from that pain and torment that many of us may carry from our past because God's not carrying it. He's not holding it against us. He's carrying it for us. He's not carrying it against us, holding it against us. He's not, um, he's not the one trying to make us feel bad. You know, if we have repented, then there's no need for the conviction to be there, right? The conviction of God, which is not a, a, a ugly guilt trip like we do to ourselves, but the conviction of God moves us, motivates us. That is its purpose, to do the right thing. So, okay, that's where I'm at. There's my little, that's my little, I just uh, popped in here and I uh, wanted to share what, what God's doing right now in my heart as I'm talking to him and praying for this young man. And I don't know if he's even alive, but I will continue to pray for him till the day I go home to be with the Lord or that I find out that he's no longer here. But I have a feeling he's here. And I feel a very strong sense in my heart that the Lord wants to use what's happened in his past to bring, bring honor and glory to, to the Lord Jesus Christ. And that's something that only God can do. How do you do that out of something so tragic? Only Jesus. All right. 
I love you guys. I hope you're having an off awesome day. Open the word of God, read it, allowing the Holy Spirit to tell you what it says. Don't just read it based on what other people have told you it says, but we want the truth of what the word says. And the Holy Spirit says that he will tell us. So let the Holy Spirit teach you today. Open the word and read it and press in with the Lord Jesus Christ and strengthen that relationship so that you can go out and do good for him. All right. I love you. Talk to you soon.